Today I would like to introduce Professor Chen Yet Por, 1908-1991, the first part of which covers the period from his birth to 1947. Chang Yat Por, born in Nyo Che Shue, where was then part of Singapore, Malaysia. Singapore became independent in 1957, and Nyo Che Shue is now Singapore's Chinatown. Because people used ox carts to transport water, that's how Nyo Che, ox cart, Shue, water, name derived. He was born into an ordinary poor family. His ancestors were from Dungguan, Guangdong, China. When he was under one year old, his family moved from Singapore to Malaysia. When he was 15 years old, his father brought him to Yangon, Myanmar. Owing to their lives did not improve, therefore, his father sent Yet Poor back to Malaysia and went to work in Vietnam directly. He, together with his mother and grandmother, made a living by growing vegetables. He has been enthusiastic about painting since he was a child and he keeps painting whenever he has free time. Judging from his works of rural scenes, women, fruits, vegetables, and animals, they are all lifelike and vivid, his talent for painting may have been innate. Malaysia was known as the Kingdom of Tin, for its abundant tin or then. When Chang was 16 years old, he not only helped his mother to plant vegetables but also worked on a tin ship, tin mine. In addition, he also tapped gum to help his family. Owing to cutting gum, his right thumb was twice the size of his left thumb. From this, we can know that his hardship of life is beyond our imagination. While working on the tin ship, he drew at break times. A worker asked him, You can paint so well, why did you come to work here? Chang Yat Por woke up and asked himself, Why can't I be a painter? So, at 17, he went to work as an apprentice at a photography studio in Ipoh. Half a year later, he moved to Kompar at his cousin's place to paint portraits. Below are four portraits for you to enjoy. First is, the bearded man and the red whisk girl, they are two of the three heroes of Feng Chin, in the novel of the Tang Dynasty. Zhang Jiayun, Chang Yatpur's eldest daughter, supplied this information. Second is Chen Yetpor drew a portrait of Chang Dai Qian. Third is a character in Beijing Opera who he drew with his fingers. Fourth is Welcome Blessings, by finger painting with freehand style he created. Later he opened a photography studio. After a while, a friend said, You're so good at photography, why don't you go to school? He then thought of going to school. He liked to go into a school but had no money. Therefore, he took a train to the city and talked to the principal of Zhonghua Primary School, which is free of tuition. Finally, he becomes the oldest student in the primary school at the age of 16. In 1925, at 19, Chang Yetpor entered the first grade of junior high school in Jinbao City. At the same time, the principal of the primary school also hired him as the picture and music teacher of the primary school as well as the coach of the school bus. In the following year, Chung transferred with the principal to the public Chung Hua Middle School as a picture and music teacher. In 1927, his colleague Li Dong Lin appreciated his talents and recommended him to Li's father, Mr. Li Tingli, to fund Chung Yet Poor to Hangzhou Art College. This noble cause also caused him to continue helping many poor students in the future. While at the Hangzhou Art School, Chang learned from two famous teachers Pan Tian Shou and Lin Fengmian, so he became good at both Chinese traditional art and Western modern art. In 1930, his third year at the art college, he transferred to the Department of Graphic Design because he felt that it was more practical. He became one of the very few artists who excelled in both Chinese and Western painting as well as pattern design. In 1931, he won the first prize at the International Art Exhibition organized by the ASPCA, American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, with a pencil sketch, titled A Universal Kinship. He is the first student at Hangzhou Art College to receive this honor. I would like to discuss more to the title of Chang's sketch. 
In my previous video for you Yuren too, I mentioned his calligraphy of the four famous quotes written by Zhang Zai, the ideologist, philosopher, and educator of the Northern Song Dynasty. In addition, in my video for Lu Yen Tao who has a seal with the last quote of the four quotes from Zhang Zai too. That is, to create peace for all generations. Now, we see Zhang Zai's name again. In the article of Shi Ming written by Zhang Zai, he believes that people and animals, plants, and all lives are born from the universe. All human beings are brothers. All lives are friends of humankind. Zhang Zai's philosophical thoughts deeply influenced Chung Yet Poor. Therefore, Cheng had a compassionate mind reflected in his paintings. All the animals he draws are vivid and lifelike, and he especially likes to draw cats and horses. He was known as the King of Drawing Cat. He painted mostly pairs of animals, couples, mother and babies, all of which showed his great love for animals. Zhang Zai's philosophical thoughts had integrated into Cheng's heart, they are like silk threads, secretly weaving behind the paintings, connecting his charming paintings, forming his life's works that also present his great love for humanity and the world. Chang Yet Poor graduated from the first class of graduates of Hangzhou Art College in 1933 with diploma number one. Maybe the first place. After graduation, owing to then turbulent environments, he worked different jobs, as a middle school teacher, co-founded a Chinese art company with his classmates, and worked as a chromatographer. Until 1935. Mr. Liu Haisu, the founder of Shanghai Art College, hired him to teach pattern and graphic design for two years. In 1936, he married Ms. Zhang Peijin. In 1937, he worked as a designer in a company in Shanghai. Until 1939, Wang Yachen hired him to be the head of the pattern design department of Xinhua Art School. He then moved north for health reasons. In 1940, he served as the director of the embroidery department of a foreign company in Yantai, Shandang. In 1941, he taught art and craft courses at Yantai Normal University. At that time, many people asked him for paintings, so he started his ink painting creations. In 1943, he held his first ink painting exhibition in Yantai. The following year, he held a solo exhibition at the Jing'an Temple Welfare Company in Shanghai. According to a book by Lu Ray Ting, he commented that in the 1940s, Qi Baishe's painting indirectly influenced Chang's animal paintings, and Su Beihong's horse painting too. Later, owing to his continuing hard studying, he not only developed his own unique style, but also became the renowned artist that Chang Dai Qian admired. Chang Dai Qian comments, even Liang Feng Zi, Liang Kai, 1140-1210, a Chinese painter of the Southern Song Dynasty, and Monk Mu Shi, Li Mu Shi CA 1210-1269, a Chinese Chan Buddhist monk and painter, at the end of the Southern Song Dynasty, may not be comparable to Cheng Yet Por, there is no second person in 300 years. The well-known Buddhist expert, Nan Hui Jin also appraised Cheng as, Cheng Yet Por is the pioneering artist in 300 years to integrate the East and West arts with innovative styles and created a unique new style. Thank to Cheng Yet Por's eldest daughter Cheng Jiayun and son Cheng Jiaxiong for authorizing me to use all the pictures and providing me first-hand information, so that we can have a close understanding of Master Zheng Yet Por's life and see his continuous innovative achievements. In addition, also thank them for providing me with four large albums and other materials for making this video possible. In the next episode, I will continue to introduce Professor Cheng Yet Por. Stay tuned!